people that were supposed to try to racism and miscarriage of justice serve and protect. Trayvon Martin, an unarmed black teenager. You might call Sandra Bland. Death is provoked. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. The December 2nd shooting of Mario Woods by five officers. The 2014 death of Michael Brown. The 32-year-old Philando Castile. We can, we must win in the name of justice. In the name of justice for Mario Woods. In the name of justice for all others who've been brutalized by police. By police. People who are ready and willing to fight for justice. Hip-hop artists are our leaders today. More than just a rapper, you are a teacher, you are an artist, and you are a leader. Your voices, your words, your rhythms have attracted young people in all of the countries of the earth that allow your music and your lyrics to be played. Peace, peace. Welcome to the Hip Hop for Justice radio podcast. I am Brother Miles alongside my partners and co-hosts. S1W James Bomb of the legendary Public Enemy and the queen of hip hop for justice, my sister Half Pint of the legendary Son of Berserk featuring No Self Control. Peace, family. Peace, Brother James. Peace. 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 How's everybody doing tonight? Doing Peace. good. How y'all doing? Great, I'm great. So- and excited about tonight. I'm live on Facebook. I'm seeing people coming in, uh, <laughs> waving. Uh, some people <laughs> I need to bring, bring them on camera. I'm adding them. <laughs> Yeah, you, okay, you're working with the technology over there. Half pint. We, we, uh, uh, what was we, you saying? We're get, we getting technical here. I, I mean, you know, <laughs> I've been around it long enough. I should know how to do some of it. Yeah, man, tell me about it. We're we going to have to come up to the modern times, Brother James. Half pint, what's the word? What's good? What's new? What's son of berserk? We're going to move kind of quick with our updates and get into our segments because tonight the intrigue is high. We're highly anticipating our beloved, uh, uh, he's not, a, I don't want to say guest because he's not a guest. He's really a foundational pillar of hip hop for justice. Student Minister Abdul Rashid Ullah Muhammad, formerly known as Student Minister Christopher Muhammad here in San Francisco, California. You all know this and those that are on for the first time need to know that he is a foundational stone, foundational pillar of hip hop for justice. He was the second person. Uh, Really, he was the first person, Brother James, and I spoke to regarding um, putting together a national conference call, asking hip hop to stand up and lend their voice, lend their the weight of their influence to the fight here in San Francisco back in 2015. The latter part, uh, we were fighting for justice for Mario Woods. And we uh, after Brother James and I spoke regarding uh, the idea of of a nationwide conference call. We shot the idea by Student Minister Christopher at the time, Student Minister Christopher, and he loved it. He green-lighted us going for it. And that's the call that we're on now, three-plus years later. Um, this is our fourth year. When we reach the latter part of December, we will mark the, our fourth year in existence by the grace of God. So he's a found, certainly a foundational pillar of, of, of this movement, and we, we thought it was only fit to have the representative here in San Francisco Bay Area, the Northern California area, and the northern part of the Western region. We thought it to yeah, to invite him on, since this is where all of this social media is headquartered, right here in this city. So as the representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, we're gonna hear from him shortly. But half pine, what's the word? Any updates on, on Son of Berserk? And and I know you got a quick update on the uh, upcoming conference in July. Yes, we have the July conference. Hip Hop for Justice, sponsoring Global Impact of Long Island Hip Hop, will be at Roosevelt Public Free Public Library in Roosevelt, Long Island, on um, July 27th from 6 to 7. Um, Son of Berserk uh, is in a collaboration with True Groove, All Stars, and we will be dropping a single uh, in the first week of June as well as performing in May tw- on May 28th out in New York City. Please don't ask me where yet, because, you know, I'm a suburbanite, so I don't know those things just offhand. <laughs> as well as the uh, Nation's Hip Hop Principal will be doing his show next week, the Classroom Hip Hop One-on-One with Dr. Blizzy. Um, and the guest will be Neek the Exotic, who is down with um, Main Source. So 
and hip hop mm. for justice is always doing their thing, spreading love, spreading the information, and trying to preserve the culture. Beautiful, beautiful, Big Brother James. I know you got a you got a, a couple of updates real quick. Really, that's kicking off something yeah. major uh, next week, right? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, um, Tuesday, May seventh, uh, we'll be embarking on the uh, major tour with the with uh, De La Soul and and, and uh, the Wu Tang Clan, um, and also May third. I dropped my new James Bond spoken word album um, that's out. Um, I'm, I'm excited about that. So, uh, and, and I'm looking forward to going overseas, touching bases with, with everybody in the nine countries that I'm going into. Now, now tell people real quick from the mind of James Bond, where can they get your album? How can they pick up that album that you just dropped? Uh, you can actually go right now to s1wjamesbomb.bandcamp.com and 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 purchase it from right there. s1wjamesbomb b o m b dot bandcamp b a n d c a m p dot com and purchase that James that brand new spoken word album by James Bomb of the legendary public enemy that rap gods or the gods of rap tour that he's talking about is in the uk so a lot of people are commenting and when is it going to be in the in the u.s to have public enemy de la soul wu-tang clan of course wu-tang just got a boulevard renamed wu-tang clan boulevard uh you're celebrating the 25th anniversary of of uh Enter the 36 Chambers, De La Soul celebrating the 30th anniversary of Three Feet High and Rising, and of course, Public Enemy, 30-year anniversary, or is it the 30-year anniversary? Yeah, it is the 30-year anniversary of It Takes a Nation of Millions. The no, 31st. 31st Actually, anniversary. Yeah. Takes 31st. A of Millions came out 1988. 88, man. So that's, I mean, it's really, and of course, DJ Premier will be the, the, the tour DJ, the host DJ of the entire tour. So that's pretty that's that's pretty major unfortunately it's in the uk only right now and, and god willing we'll, we'll be able to get that in the states that's it for the updates because we want to move quickly we're going to jump right into our segments i see more and more people calling in thank you all for calling in we're going to jump right into our segments here on the hip-hop for justice radio podcast where art meets activism we're going to kick it off with our sister half pint to give us a peace of mind peace 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 of mind peace of mind these brothers and sisters Tonight's reading and homework, The Negro Revolt by Louis E. Lomax. Brother Lomax says the Negro Revolt involved a drastic change in our methods and ideas concerning segregation and established Negro leadership organizations. Concerning segregation, the revolt lies in the fact that we not only have decided that the last vestige, the last vestige of the evil must be eliminated, but have embraced a new methodology and armed ourselves with new weapons in a war against segregation. All the revolt against the established Negro leadership organization has come to because these organizations are wed to weapons, which, though they are accompanied some gains, have proved incapable of dealing that segregation final blow. Why has the, new, the Negro revolt come now? The late 50s and 60s have been good years, relatively speaking, for Negroes, and even white liberals are hard-pressed to understand why better conditions for Negroes have served only to usher in a new Negro militancy. This new militancy jarred with the scene and against the surface appearance of the Negroes with the life and country. He goes on to talk about how the white population's confusion about the Negroes are up to an understandable question. For the truth be told, Negroes are fairly confused about themselves. I would wager that more than half the Negro population as a deep psychological problem over the apparently simple ethnic question of who and what am I. I would go on the way to that even more the Negroes are incapable of articulation just to see what they are underneath the catch-all label. The American Negro is a man, not God, made race. We are the result of the alliances between slave masters and their female slaves. Thus, the American Negro does not have a culture in the precise and classic sense of the word. Although we are socially and economically segregated from the American mainstream, we are culturally integrated with it. 
We speak the language of the majority, and when allowed to, we participate in the major institutions. When not allowed to, we form our own institutions and pattern them after those of the majority. To understand the Negro, one must reread the Federalists and come to grips with the new and basic assumptions about man, God, and government that guided Jefferson, Washington, Jay, and Adams. Now we are employing a new weapon, or at least an old weapon with a new militancy in our hearts. This, in essence, is what the Negro Revolt is about. Peace, my brothers and sisters. Man, half pint. Thank you so much for that. We're going to move quickly to S1W James Bomb for his segment, Louder Than a Bomb. My drop bombs on them. This is hip hop for justice. Peace, family. Uh, once again, thank you for all coming on with us uh, Sunday this Sunday night. This is a, a very special um, night. Is what I say the war council this is the war council right now and what's been happening to us and I I broke from my original um, segment to talk about you know we, we have this thing in, in the mosque where we talk about what Islam has done for me I just want to say the the, the the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan when I had no direction as a young man and I came into the Nation of Islam at 20, 21 years old, um, turned 21 in the Nation of Islam, and this man has never said um, one one iota of hate or taught hate to me. Everything he was teaching me was about responsibility and how to be a man and, and how to take responsibility for myself and how to stand up for me and defend myself and my family and my people. So, just in that alone, just for myself, and I'm speaking for me, to stand up and defend him, because I, I'm a beneficiary of his counsel when Public Enemy was going through the the awesome power of the Jewish community, uh, when we went through the, that particular situation in, in life, you know, people threatening our lives and that. The man put the weight of the nation of Islam behind public enemy. So I'm eternally grateful for that alone. So I'm saying hands off the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. That's my father. Peace, family. Brother James, thank you for that. Um, and half pint, I, I know we didn't, we didn't get a chance to tap you in on this, but we're going to do that right now before we bring on our uh, illustrious family member because he's not a guest he's a family member uh our big brother student minister abdul rashidullah muhammad formerly known as student minister christopher muhammad but by now everybody knows that facebook and instagram banned the honorable minister louis farrakhan totally deleted and removed his social media uh, presence on those platforms. And the justification was that he was deemed dangerous, um, a purveyor of hate speech and, you know, all that comes with that. Um, so Half Pint, this is, you know, Give me your thoughts on your first reaction, because I don't think I, I know we didn't talk. We've really been, you know, in all out battle mode, uh, you know, on social media. So we haven't had a chance to to get on the phone and verbally talk about it. But, but you know, some of your first thoughts that come to mind or came to mind when when you heard or when you saw that the minister was banned. Like, what? how did how did that hit you? And what are, what are your thoughts on this? Well, excuse me. Well, when I first heard it, I wasn't surprised because at, in this climate, in today's climate, this was bound to happen. Because when you are, when you speak truth to power, and you are speaking the honest, you are speaking truthfully, and you do not, you're not bought or sold by anyone because you already believe in a higher power and that that's what guides you. Then they are going to use every medium that they possibly can to shut you down, and they have been doing this to. To Minister Farrakhan for decades now, and they still don't understand that the people rally around him and garner all of that 
and will take that hit for him because he does speak truth to power. Whether you agree with him or everything that he says or not, I think people are at the point where we're tired of other people trying to tell us who our heroes are and dictate to us who we should respect, who we should, you know, put up in the forefront, who speaks for us and everything else. They have spent so much time trying to dictate to us who we are and, our, and a message to us of inferiority. And you have Minister Farrakhan who is willing to, you know, step into the uh, into the um, forefront and on the front line and say, listen, you will not continue to bear beat us down with your words. This is the truth. This is who we are. And you will learn how to respect us. And at the same time, you see the people who, no matter where their, you know, whatever their religious beliefs are or where their background is, they are rallying around around him in this in this moment. And this is not a crisis because we continue to see these things happen. What it is is it's a it's an, it's an opportunity for us to now hold accountable all those mediums who like to try to dictate to us who we are, who speaks for us, who are our heroes, and let them know we will not tolerate this. Did you get a chance to see? Snoop's response. I saw some of his response. Um, and again, when you have these, the question was, you know, I, I did see a, a question about, you know, where are the celebrities or where are the people that he speaks, you know, the, the pe- that he speaks for, and they are ready to make a move. Yeah, you know, I, we, 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 the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, it, it, quite honestly, um, for everyone listening, uh, in in my humble opinion, has been the best friend the hip hop nation has ever had. Uh, he he's always and Brother James, as a founding member of Public Enemy, can speak to this because he's been in his presence, in the presence of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan several times. Whether it was squashing beefs with artists or having hip hop summits and conferences, That's right. um, or personally benefiting from his direct <laughs> guidance. Um, to the group um, guiding and and helping them navigate through very murky and muddy and you know shark infested waters called the entertainment business but the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has offered sound guidance divine guidance and counsel to the hip hop community for decade after decade after decade and most if not every single one of these major major heavyweight artists not only have they they sought his counsel and benefited from his counsel to be, be quite honest with you man they're alive because of this man so there should be no silence from anyone but since this is the hip hop for justice radio podcast we're, we're admonishing and exhorting our brothers and sisters in the hip hop community to stand up and speak up there, there can be no silence during a time like this. So I think tonight, because we're blessed with our brother, he's with us now, and we, we want to bring him on. We're going to open up the platform. We're not going to do an interview setting. This platform is opened up for him to speak on what he sees in this banning of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and what it means and what type of uh, 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 far-reaching implications this has. So without any further delay, and we want to, I see more and more people getting on uh, the call. So thank you all for calling in to the Hip Hop for Justice radio podcast. This is where art meets activism, and we're welcoming back one of the founding pillars of Hip Hop for Justice, our beloved big brother, student minister, representing the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan here in San Francisco, student minister Abdul Rashid Ullah Muhammad. Welcome, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Good to be back with the family and the Hip Hop for Justice team, and certainly all of the good that you all represent in enlightening and organizing uh, our people in the world of hip hop so that we as a people can fight with a full force working side by side on all levels, whether it be in social media, hip hop, entertainment, sports, uh, community organizing, 
the so-called gangs working together. All of us are being called together now because our champion is under attack. Right. And an attack on him is an attack on all black and oppressed people throughout the earth. So thank you, uh, Brother Miles and Brother James and Sister Half Pint and others uh, for inviting me back. Yes, sir. It's an, it's an honor to have you. And brother minister, like I was saying, we we don't, you know, the the platform is open. We just we want we wanted to offer this to you because as we've done in the past with the defending Farcon podcast that we've had, the fear of a black planet, the toxic terror in San Francisco, we want to offer the platform for you to give us the benefit of of your insight your view, your perspective, how you see and and what exactly do you see in this banning of the minister from social media. Um, so maybe we can just start with the view of social media from from a global perspective because we're here in San Francisco and Everything that the world depends on in the way of technology comes right out of this area. Can you talk a little bit to start off just on the significance of that and this area that we're in? Thank you. Let me say this. Every important event in a servant of God's life should always begin by seeking the aid, guidance, and the protection of Almighty God, Allah. So I say in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. I greet you and your audience with the greetings of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, sir. Dear Brother Miles, your, your question and your thought is an important one and I think that you started out by saying that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has been not just a good friend but the best friend of hip hop and our brothers and sisters in the hip hop world and community and you rightly said that many of our brothers that are prominent that have made Uh, money and success and become famous and known all over the world, many of them owe their very lives to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam because it was the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan that used the weight of his position as leader of the revolution, that he stepped in when the enemy orchestrated beefs between the East Coast and the West Coast, orchestrated beefs among our young brothers and sisters who were involved in what they call gangster rap, and the enemy tried to use the imagery of gangster rap to poison the, the view of people all over the earth toward black people and black youth in particular. It was Minister Farrakhan when I was a young Muslim that went on tour in the late 80s and it was entitled Stop the Killing. And he literally warned black people, a generation of black youth, that the enemy was planning an all-out assault and was using our ignorance and our self-hatred as the door for that attack. It was the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan that knowing the enemy was going to uh, use our ignorance to wipe us out and wipe out our future uh, with an all-out attack that called for the Million Man March and brought the plight of black men and presented black men to the world in such a beautiful, disciplined, loving, strong manner that the world saw a new black man, a new community of people and and it was the minister that stepped in and settled the beast you know and caused a way in which brothers could settle their differences and avoid bloodshed 
Right. Now some of them have been gone on to become not just billionaires, but uh, millionaires, but billionaires. So they have an obligation. I watch some of our great entertainers now with entourages and security around them. But there was a time when they called on the nation of Islam and it was the FOI that secured these brothers and sisters and kept them safe and kept their families safe. Right. Black politicians, black leaders, many of them owe their lives to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in the nation of Islam. Jesse Jackson may not be alive today were it not for Minister Farrakhan's love and brotherhood and instructing the FOI under his leadership to protect him and his family. Right. See, God hates ingratitude. And one of the worst things you can do with God is to not be grateful when he blesses you with a benefactor, with a brother, with a, with a word, with help, with guidance, with counsel, all of that in the person of a man. And that man is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So this is no time, as you rightly said, for anyone to sit on the sideline. You've made enough money. Some of you will never spend the money you made in your lifetime. So this is no time. To sit back and read the tea leaves and watch how the wind blows. No, you owe Minister Farrakhan. He has been a good friend to you. That's why I'm so grateful to that strong soldier called Snoop Dogg. Our brother took a bold stand. Right. Chuck D and others have taken bold stand. And you're right to do it, but you show the world that you're not afraid to stand with a man that stood with you. So those good examples have to now be put forth and supported because we don't want to leave our brothers out there. Right. When they take this kind of stand because the Jews are a vindictive people. They don't forgive and they don't forget. But, you know, you have to understand that the people you have targeted have become and are the people of God. So the plans and the schemes that you have tried in the past, you may have weakened and frightened some, but this is a new generation coming up. And as the Holy Quran teaches, they are humble toward the believers, mighty toward the disbelievers, but they don't fear the censure of any censurer. And there's a whole new crop of black entertainment, black athletes, Colin Kaepernick, Snoop Dogg, and others that don't fear the censure of the censurer. And so what you've meant for evil is now going to prove to be for good. All things work for good for those who love the Lord. So in this hour, we're grateful in San Francisco. Yes. Because... We've been placed right on the front line. Facebook is down the street. Twitter is down the street. YouTube, Netflix, Instagram, all of them are within 20 minutes from the mosque. So we are just waiting for marching orders. We're waiting for our strategic plan because we know that we can be mobilized right. and mobilize the community, not to beg Facebook Twitter or Instagram to hell with Facebook Twitter Instagram and any other social media platform because the million man march did not need social media to pull two million black men to the mall it's not the point of begging the enemy no the point is we're not gonna let you get away with besmirching the good name of a good man and cause you to now organize yourselves to move on Minister Farrakhan on the basis of a lie. No, we're going to challenge you. You will not speak that kind of evil as if he's a dangerous man or a terrorist. No, those of us who have benefited from Minister Farrakhan, it's our hour. It's our time. So we're strategically placed right here in the Bay Area, ready, willing, and able to challenge this enemy because there's no greater cause 
than to stand up for a man that has stood up for all of us. And not just all of us. He stood up for your children, your children's children, and your unborn generation. Some of you are OGs today when you would have been dead in your 20s were it not for Minister Farrakhan. The fact that you're able to grow gray hair and see your grandchildren, you owe Minister Farrakhan your life as a brother because maybe what he said to you or what he did for you has saved your life. Mm. 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 Facebook, Brother Minister, just being down the street. Twitter, Facebook maybe 20, 25 minutes away. Twitter, no, Twitter is Twitter is downtown San Francisco over on Market Street. Right, right, right. It's I'm literally sorry, a half a mile away from here. Right. I'm, if I said Twitter, I meant Facebook, maybe twenty minutes away. Down Twitter, the highway. Twitter, literally a mile and a half away. Instagram, as you said, and, and YouTube is twelve, fifteen minutes away. It's all based right here, but we see that it was Facebook and Instagram. Instagram being owned by Facebook. So the minister's been deleted, totally removed from those two social media sites. What what do you think they are trying to say? And what do you think they're are they, are they trying to encourage the other social media sites to follow suit? And 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 what you know, what do you see this move saying beyond just the removal of the minister. Well, they're at their wit's end. They have never faced a black leader that they have moved on with all of the tools and weight and power at their disposal. There's never been a man, black or white, that the Jews have not been able to handcuff and or destroy when they move on them, there's not been one that's been able to resist their power other than the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's teacher, the Messiah, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. They've been unable to stop him. That is driving them nuts. <laughs> because when you have poured on a man for the last that I know of, because I came to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan at the age of 24. That was 35 years ago. Mm. And I came because he was under attack then. Wow. And I decided as a young college student that I can't sit on the sideline and watch this man at war and not stand up and not just cheer him on from the sideline, but I decided to join him. That was in 19... 19- uh, 84, uh, when I began standing up to, to join the nation of Islam, he was fighting the enemy then. Mm. And they thought that they had enough to blow him out the water way back in 84. The mm. Senate condemned him, right. censured him 95 to nothing. And Minister Farrakhan, he wasn't waiting around to be defended. He was his best defense. Right. He went and challenge the enemy at every turn on every platform and when i saw that i said that man needs help you know and so when minister farrakhan began standing up the enemy did not know what they were unleashing Mm. The the minister was trying to help jesse jackson right he had subordinated himself as a supporter and helper and a defender of jesse jackson who was running for president. And then Jesse Jackson got in trouble with the Jews calling uh, New York Jaime Town. And Minister Farrakhan defended our brother and stood by him and said, look, we can criticize the brother's campaign if you disagree with him on the issues, but we're not gonna let you create a climate where our brother could be assassinated. And, And the Jews went all in on Minister Farrakhan and called him a new black Hitler 35 years ago. And Jesse Jackson, quite frankly, moonwalked or left the minister there to fight them. And even though the minister was defending him, Jesse left the minister out there. 
to defend himself, which is fine. But it shows you how long he's been fighting this frontline fight. Right. So now, 35 years later, President Reagan wanted Farrakhan dead. President Bush wanted Farrakhan. The ex-CIA president, George (laughs) Bush, the father, wanted him dead. Uh, Bill Clinton was being pressed. Uh, by them to move on Minister Farrakhan. George Bush, the son, was being pressed to move on Minister Farrakhan. Even Obama was being pressed mm. to move on the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So he's outlasting presidents. Some not willing, others not able to do to Minister Farrakhan what they've been planning to do uh, from the beginning. So when you have a man it's not that Minister Farrakhan, as, as an individual, is so strong. He's strong in God. And when you are strong in God, you are backed by the power and the protection, not just of the God, but of his teacher, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So it's that level of backing, along with the love of the people. And this fits, Brother Miles, right into the very pattern of Jesus. See, Jesus has to be seen in his proper light. Jesus was a revolutionary messianic figure right. who came from among the oppressed. And the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, like all black leaders, are in the line of Jesus, but it's only this man that's been able to fulfill what is written of that man, not in a historical way, but in the prophetic way. And when you read the scriptures, the enemy began to see that if they left this man alone, that the whole world believe in him. And then they felt as if, if they leave him alone, that they would lose their place. In, a, in, in the world, in the country, because they rule, but they fear an awakening among the people, that if the people awaken, the people will see the harm, the detriment that uh, those in power have used their power to keep the people ignorant, keep the people uh, in a state of total madness and have taken the country down morally, economically, politically, socially, and then people's awakening begins to look around to see who produced this condition. So there's a great fear Mm. of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan as not just a man of God, but a social reformer. Don't you know if a man can cause you to stop smoking, cause you to stop drinking? Well, that puts the alcohol and the tobacco industry out of business. Don't you know if a man will cause you to respect your your woman and cause you to respect family and cause you to clean up and stand up, you begin to affect the prison industrial complex. The injustice justice system gets affected. In fact, all of the systems that have destroyed our people, they become impacted because a man stands up and raises as a standard bearer the will and way of God. So that man becomes a threat, brother. This ain't no lightweight thing. Mm. There are those among the powerful Jews that know exactly what Minister Farrakhan's identity is. They know that they've perpetrated a fraud. They know that they have stolen our identity. This is identity fraud, on identity theft on the highest level. They know what they've done. They know black people in America, not no ordinary people. They know that we are the fulfillment of the children of Israel being in bondage for 400 years. They know we have a Messiah uh, coming to us for our condition. They've been expecting, uh, J. Edgar Hoover was expecting the rise of a black Messiah. It's in the FBI document. Right. And everyone that they looked at, they worked to destroy. Right. But the man they missed, Elijah's man, he had slipped through the cracks. And by the time they looked up, he had already begun doing something no 
have, no one has ever done, and that is rebuild something that was destroyed by the United States government. No other organization has ever been rebuilt except the Nation of Islam under the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's uh, leadership. And so they're at their wits' end, brother. They've tried everything. They've tried to uh, uh, destroy his good name. They went before him and went behind him. And everything that they've done has failed. And Farrakhan is the last man standing. So when you reach that point, now they're going to play out the drama found in your Bible and scripture where it says that they're going to go to the Roman, I mean, the American authorities and try to get them to make a move on Minister Farrakhan as they did with Jesus and the Roman authorities. And they have already met the Sanhedrin, Mm -hmm. Caiaphas, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the chief priests, along with the betrayal even among our people Mm. because there is a group that has already met wherever they are whoever they are the scripture says that there's a conspiracy now because you don't have 20 groups to oppose there's no more sclc uh panther party uh um, uh, SNCC, CORE, all these other groups that they planned against and planned on in the 60s, they're gone. But today, there's a last man standing and a last group of organized black people standing. So all their dirty tricks are being poured in the direction of the Nation of Islam and its leader, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. But we are already destined to win this victory it's already written and foretold by the honorable elijah muhammad that the nation of islam will never fall again so we're in that season right now it's a season of betrayal it's a season of conspiracy Mm. and you can't talk about conspiracy uh brother without talking about conspirators Right. You can't talk about Jesus and don't talk about Judas and the Judas factor. Right. You can't talk about a plot and don't talk about plotters. So this is a season I warn every hypocrite and demon and schemer and plotter and deal cutter. You run the risk of being exposed today, not by accusation, but by your deeds or the lack thereof in an hour like this. I just don't want to be of those who betray my father and leader. I want to be of those, I don't want to be of those who step away and remain silent when my Lord and my leader has been attacked. So I don't want to be one of those written of in that rotten way. And I hope that's all of our prayers because in this season, any of us can turn under the right or wrong circumstances. So thank you for inviting me on this program because it allows us to express not just our love and solidarity in words, but now we got to be ready and willing to put our words, put our thoughts, put our heart to a test so that we can prove our love and show our gratitude to the man of God in our midst. Yes, sir. Brother Minister, you, you talked about um, there are those among the Jews, those among wise white people that know exactly the identity of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. What do you see? Now, the Honorable, let me say this. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad once said that the ultimate aim of this world is to kill the messenger of God. So the the thing that is of utmost importance to this world is to kill the messenger of God. This banning of the minister under the guy on Facebook and Instagram under the guise of being deemed dangerous and the what's called community standards of Facebook where they talk about dangerous individuals and organizations And they say that this includes organizations or individuals involved in the following terrorist activity, organized hate, mass or serial murder, human trafficking, 
organized violence or criminal activity, none of which fits the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan or the Nation of Islam. There are wise people that know his identity and know his track record and his history. And, it, that, and they know that it is of impeccable righteousness. So what does this that they're doing, that they did, what do you see that in the step or in the line leading to that ultimate aim? Where do you see this move by Facebook and, and Instagram? Well, brother, you, you, you have to, you said it so beautifully. Your, your question uh, has a root uh, in a profound understanding of how the enemy works. Let me read something to you yes, and sir. your audience. Yes, sir. In September 2016, the cabinet of Israel, now this is a foreign country, has, is, has said to have agreed with Facebook to remove content that is deemed an incitement. This announcement came after top Facebook officials met with the Israeli government to determine which Facebook accounts should be deleted on the grounds that they constituted as incitement. Wow. Now just think about a foreign government meeting with Facebook to give them marching orders wow. to tell them which sites they should remove from Facebook. Now, how does a foreign government right. have that kind of power? Then you talk about the criminal spy organization the convicted criminal spy organization called the Anti-Defamation League of B'nai B'rith, the Southern Poverty Law Center. Mm -hmm. These spy organizations that have been on record, brother, as spying on politicians, organizations, including the Nation of Islam, right here in San Francisco. We have the documents. Right. Where they were spying on us in our early days, trying to build the mosque. The ADL was spying on us right here in San Francisco and selling or trading its intelligence gathering information even to the apartheid government of South Africa because they were involved in trying to maintain apartheid during the time of Mandela being released from prison. They are in league with the FBI and their tactics are COINTELPRO-esque tactics. Mm -hmm. right. Now, can right. you imagine a spy organization like the ADL having a Silicon Valley office where they now are helping to design policy? Mm -hmm. What they call, listen to this crap, this nebulous term that they use. They call it hate. Right. What the hell is hate? Left to be defined by whoever has the power to define. Hate is like terrorism. It's in the eye of the beholder. We don't know what the hell terrorism is. Then they come out and say we're in a war against terror. So that could be anybody, whoever you smear with that label, and now we're, we're at war or we've got to stop hate. And then they are the definers of hate. This is why you got to challenge the enemy. I had one person say, well, we don't fight the enemy over public accommodations. You know, we work to have our own. Yeah, right. I didn't meet you in Muhammad's hotel. I met you at the Marriott. I met right. you at the, the Hyatt. <laughs> we didn't stay in no hotel that we own. We don't own a hotel. That fight has been fought. We're now staying at the finest hotels in the world. And if the enemy tell us to get out of the Marriott because we're black or we're Muslim, we challenge him right. on the principle of justice and truth. You right. don't let the enemy get away with moving on your leader on some weak humbug as if he's some dangerous man. That man, he's setting the stage 
for the arrest of Farrakhan, mm. the public humiliation of Farrakhan. Mm. He just wants to know if he makes a move, what kind of outcry will it be? Remember, Brother Miles, they wanted to take Jesus, but they feared the multitude. That's right. So they're always weighing, look, if we do this, what's going to be the response? They always have their calculator out. So as Elaine Brown, Sister Elaine Brown said, the former chair of the Black Panther Party, she said, look, the, the Hugh, Dr. Huey P. Newton said, we must produce the greater fear. What is the greater fear? Sell out Negroes have to know, man, if you betray your own, you don't just fear the white man. You don't just fear Jews. You got to fear your own people. That's the only way we'll stop all this sell out stool pigeon crap that happens with our people. You got to have the greater fear. So they know and they feel or they calculate it, that if we make this move now, maybe there won't be a great outcry. But what they find, what they're going to find and what they have found is that you've, you, you've offended the sensibilities of people all over the world. And that's the beauty of Snoop Dogg stepping out to say, wait a minute, you attacking my man. And an attack on him is an attack on me. Now, many of us have become addicted to Facebook. I personally don't have a Facebook account. I don't give a damn about a Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or nothing else. But some of our people have gotten addicted to it. You understand? And so now you have to face your own thinking. Because now, not only are they threatening Minister Farrakhan's account and banned his account, but they're threatening to ban anyone who supports him or his view or his vision or his philosophy or his ideology. So now you are th under threat. And those who support the minister are under threat. This is why we got to get busy, brother, and we got to move quick. He doesn't fear truth. Satan, the enemy, does not fear truth. He fears organized truth. You understand? He fears when truth becomes organized and mobilized. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan says organization is more important than truth because a disorganized truth will always be overcome by an organized lie. How do you think this enemy has built a world that he runs? It's been built on a lie, but it's organized lie. So the enemy fears that if you transfer your anger, transfer your outrage into a mobilization, that's when the enemy gets afraid. When you make Facebook's uh, advertisers pay, when you make Instagram and all these other entities pay for their allegiance to Facebook and others, when they recognize that the trillions of dollars that black people have at our disposal can be removed at a moment's notice. And then some of us need to go on Facebook detox because some of us use Facebook for silly reasons. Minister Farrakhan uses it for revolutionary reasons. That's why they banned his account, because he doesn't play on his account. You won't find Minister Farrakhan taking selfies at the beach, doing stupid things on Instagram and Facebook. No, his Instagram, his Facebook, he don't have no followers. He, he doesn't follow anyone. He has followers. But Minister Farrakhan uses that platform to express wisdom and truth and inspiration. So they know he's not a danger, but he is a danger to the liar and the lie and those who falsely uh, have kept the peoples of the earth in an ignorant state, uh, then he is a threat to that. But in truth, they know his identity, not just as the last man standing, brother. They recognize that he and his father Elijah is the fulfillment of the expected Messiah. See, the Dead Sea Scrolls talk about two Messiahs. The Jews just got out of their Passover season and they have a, a chair 
and the door cracked open during Passover Seder, they're expecting the return of Elijah. And what is the nation of Islam telling the world and members of the Jewish community? He's telling them that the Elijah you're looking for is none other than the honorable Elijah Muhammad. And there are wise Jews that are recognizing that to be the truth. And guess what? You can't speak about Elijah and not speak about Elisha. You can't speak about Jesus and not speak about Peter and Paul. You can't speak about Muhammad, Muslim world, and not speak about Ali and the other rightly guided college. So we are in a situation where Farrakhan is a danger to the world of religion because we are at the root of it all. So Christian theologians are going to go have to go back to the book and are going to have to engage us on this question of Jesus, Christ, who is he? From whom shall he come? When shall he come? And where shall he come? We got to talk about that. We got to talk to the Muslim world. You're looking for Mahdi. And Mahdi comes back with Jesus in the last days. We got to talk about who is Jesus al Masi. That man in the scripture that uh, opens the eyes of the blind and makes the deaf hear and the dumb speak by Allah's permission. Who is that Jesus that te teaches the people from, a, from the cradle and of old age? Who is that Jesus that teaches the people what foods to eat and what to store in their houses? Because whoever that man is, that's the Messiah. We got to have a big, long conversation. And that's why Minister Farrakhan said that the greatest conference you can have today is a conference on Jesus. Who is he? What is his identity? And the world is in store for a shock. You know why? Because they've disrespected black people. Nobody wants to acknowledge our 400 years of bondage in America. They pass that off as if it was nothing. It may be nothing with you, but it's something with God. It brought him out of hiding and it caused for the Lord of the world to make a visitation with black people because nobody gave a damn for us until Master Fahd Muhammad came for us. So that's how I answer that question. Excuse my passion, brother. No, 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 no. no Go on. No, 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 Brother Minister. Thank you so much for that. Um, I have to tell you, um, I have for the last maybe three to five minutes my computer shut down my phone mm -hmm. I was not able to the only reason I was able to hear what you were saying and was able to get back on right here towards the end of what you said was because my daughter was able to let me hear what you were saying as I was trying to troubleshoot both my phone nor my laptop would allow me access it literally collapsed right in front of me showing and bearing witness that what we're doing is absolutely impacting and affecting the enemy and we're on the enemy's radar so thank you uh for for your words for your expression um i want to ask brother james and sister half pint um to jump in and if there's any question that you all uh, or anything that you need some clarity on or a question that you may want to ask feel free to to chime in we'll start with half pint yes brother I, first of all I just want to say as always you know thank you for the opportunity to um, you know with this platform and bring it to the forefront again my issue really is that you know they have yet to understand that they create the revolutionaries out of the climate in our, in, in our environment that they create. So if they, you know, when you look at the banning of Farrakhan, and I'll, have, and I'll continuously, um, opportunity to continue to defend him, they continue to make it harder for themselves because they won't recognize the truth, the power that he speaks. And unfortunately, you know, when we look at the social media, like you said, 
you know, there's a lot of people that are on air that are ready to, you know, to follow out and carry out any of his orders. So, you know, at this point, we start, we need to start thinking about developing our own social media, our own platforms to dictate our narratives so that we can stop letting them tell us who our heroes are. You know, at this point, we already know, we already know what the issues are. We know how, we know who the enemy is. We just now need to start creating our own so that we won't have to worry about what they're doing and who they're t- talking about and what they're trying to do to us. That's well said. And the, one of the most profound things that you said, Sister Half Pint, is this. You said, quote, we know who the enemy is. See, that's, that's the great awakening. Because do you know for the last 6,000 years, we have not known who the enemy is? Wow. Do you know that for the last 400 or more years, we have not known who the enemy is? So for you to say that, that means we're in the rise or the a period of time called the general resurrection of the dead. Our people are ready mm. because the enemy's actions are now making him known. And when the average young brother and sister recognizes who the enemy really is, we no longer look at ourselves as enemies to each other. But we now train our focus on the real enemy. Look, in the 60s, when I was a youngster, you know, we didn't have anything but transistor radios, telephones, that you had to be at home to answer, rotary dial phones at that. Do you know that in the 60s, when Martin Luther King was attacked, cities went up? in flames all over the country and there was no Instagram, there was no uh, Twitter, there was no Facebook but they noticed that Newark Chicago, Detroit LA other cities went up in flames because of what happened but they were looking to see who called for these riots or revolts and they couldn't find any one person to blame it on, but it was the conditions that produced the uprising. Because we always had something in our community called word on the street, the grapevine. (laughs) Right, right. And black folk always been able to get messages to each other, (laughs) either through the drum. (laughs) Right. You understand? Right. Hip hop started by putting messages to the beat. To the dress, right. so, so, you know, we should never lose our ability to pass on information. <laughs> That's right. Now, the question is, how do you do it in a highly technological world? See, the Internet provided the average person access to information. Mm. And the enemy uh, became upset because he could not corral it, control it and bring it under his filter. Mm. So that's been their great challenge is how do we corral this information superhighway? So they've determined we go to the companies that control it. It used to be a time when you could have a TV station just using the airwaves. You could get a radio station in your living room just using the airways. Then they corralled the airways. And now you got to go through cable or satellite that they control. And the local little channels don't hardly get no play because they wanted to bring it under total control. Mm -hmm. So you got to pay for TV now. When I was coming up, TV was free. Right. I mean, you may have only had five or six or ten channels but it was free <laughs> right. but today you gotta pay for basic cable much less all the channels so now the enemy has put a control on or is trying to put a control on social media the internet you know now they don't mind foolishness stupidity no. violence right. filth that could be on that on on Facebook all day long people naked, stripping, doing all kind of acts of, of, of wickedness on, so on Facebook, that's fine. 
They don't have a problem with that. Their problem is when you start trying to get truth to the people and they are trying to plug all the holes through which truth can leak out. Mm. So how do we get our own platform? That's for somebody to figure out. But if your platform is dependent somehow on the enemy, mm. in terms of him allowing you to use his, his platform, then he'll always have the ability to cut you off unless you're able to produce the greater fear. And let me tell you how you do it. Mm. You now go to all of the uh, celebrities, all of the high-level black people that are worth billions of dollars. Okay. All and right. you just play Snoop Dogg's response. Right. And then hold them accountable. Shame them. What say you about your brother being banned? Are you going to be silent? And right. don't you know if, if the, I'm not going to name names, but if the prominent ones stand up, do you know what Nipsey Hussle's value was? Man, come on now. The beauty of our brother? Come on. Now look, I'm from L.A. Yes, sir. I lived there 30 years. I lived in the projects in Los Angeles. Yes, sir. I know what that is. But that little brother from the rolling 60s to take his little money and the budding fame that he was uh, beginning to garner and to go back to Swanson and Crenshaw and open up businesses right there in the hood and be there as a proprietor, as an example to the young soldiers in the street there. Do you know he shamed some of these billionaire brothers and sisters who are running around in custom Bentleys and airplanes and nothing wrong with that? But they have not invested like Nipsey Hussle invested, not just with money, but his presence, his, his strength, his love. Right. That's what makes, and when I saw the outpouring Yes, of sir. the young thugs in the street. Yes, Those sir. were the salt to the earth brothers and sisters. And they were hurt and heartbroken uh, over the loss of their brother because he was one of their own. That's a fact. And let me tell you something. When you grow up in the projects and somebody escapes the projects and makes it outside of the projects and comes back to the projects, you know what that does? For the little people in the project, that's that's a source of pride. And that's what our people need. So I'm saying to us, look, if we've got organized quickly and we called on our friends on Facebook and Instagram uh, uh, and Twitter to say, look, I want you from tonight spread uh Brother Snoop and Chuck and all the other prominent ones among us spread their support of Minister Farrakhan. Spread this message of hip hop for justice with 10 or 20 of your people. And right. let's see if we can get a million people in this next week to stand with Farrakhan. Right, right, right. You'd be surprised what weight that would carry as it trends all over the world. Right. And then find out what our um, Facebook's pressure point. Everybody got a pressure point. That's why they pressed the, the Facebook people to, uh, they found their pressure point. In fact, I read that um, Mr. Zuckerberg, I think that's his name, that's his name. Uh, yeah. actually is coming under insider trading charges. Coincidentally, the day before, they banned Minister Farrakhan. Did they make him an offer he couldn't refuse? Mm. Are they threatening him? Is he bowing to pressure? We don't know. But some of us who understand the science of research, do some research. How does their revenue stream come in? Is it advertisement? Is it support? What produces the, the backbone of in, uh, Facebook's financial position? And then we determine how we're going to offer, make them an offer that they can't refuse. And if there's enough of our people 
that have the discipline and strength to say, you know what? If you ban Farrakhan, ban me too. See that me too? Now becomes me Farrakhan too. (laughs) And you know, Brother Miles, you remember, we started I Am. Yes, sir. Oscar Grant. Right. Yes, sir. How did did I Am Oscar Grant start? Because that now has become the anthem all over the world. I am Trayvon Martin. I am this and that. How did it start? Tell the people how that started. In the fight for justice for Oscar Grant, in the beginning of the organizing, you said to a group of community leadership, political, spiritual, and community leadership, that that could have been my son. That could have been... You know, my my nephew. Matter of fact, that could have been me. Matter of fact, I am Oscar Grant. And that's how that chant began. Now, that's not known. We didn't copyright it. We didn't try to make merchandise off of it. That was inspiration. But the point is, Oscar Grant's name became known all over the world. And you know what? The only national leader that came to stand with Oscar Grant and the Grant family was the Nation of Islam's illustrious leader, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Right. So now if we apply that same principle, Sister Half Frank, and call on all of those listeners that are on this line, plus those that are not on this line, and give them marching orders, contact 50 of your people right now. Right. And tell them Farrakhan has been banned. See, that becomes a strategic plan. It's not just raising outrage, but now it's outrage, organized outrage. And Mm. then you'll find the enemy will have to respond because it's Farrakhan today and it's others tomorrow. Nobody should have that kind of power to ban free speech. And if you got that kind of power, it has to be exposed because you use it and pick and choose it based upon your uh, desire. See, you shouldn't have that ability. ADL hasn't earned the right, not a criminal spy organization, to now define hate and then connect it to terror and then make the Nation of Islam a peaceful group with a track record of peace. Now you want to make us a pariah all over the world and make us an untouchable which opens the pathway to a move on minister farrakhan and we can't sit back and let that happen man the scriptures say what it says but let's beat prophecy let's be found doing our part and then let whatever the will of allah is he will make that happen whether we like it or not but at least we have done something to prove our worth rather than being cowards you know, couching cowardice under the guise of whatever the will of Allah is. Well, it may be his will that we stand up and organize. So let us not Mm. demonstrate cowardice and niggardliness and jive time sitting back watching a drama play out. We know what that is. So it's time to rise up. Thank you for your uh, question and comment, strong sister half pint, and your consistency of That's the right. front line. Certainly the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has a strong, sincere supporter in you. And I That's thank right. God for you, my sister. Brother Minister, I want to ask, uh, Brother James, if you don't mind, I wanted to ask this. The great James Baum, our great brother. James Baum. warrior. He's here. He, as a matter of fact, Brother James is, is live on Facebook. So there's people that are listening live on this conference call line, all but there's also people to all watching Thank live you, Brother James, for your stand over the years, because you're a witness bearer of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan when he, I was a young FOI in the 80s, assigned to the detail of securing public enemy when you all were under death threats on the West Coast. I was one of the little soldiers assigned him by the captain to go and make sure you all were secured on behalf of the Nation of Islam 
So we go way back, my brother. So it's always good to hear your strong voice. Brother James, you still there? He may be on mute or perhaps. James, are you there? I think he's still live, but he's probably dealing with the technical difficulties. He you can hear him on the show. I mean, you can hear the show if you're watching it oh, live. Oh, no, no, no. He, okay, there he is. Brother James, you still there? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm here. I, I, okay. Yes, sir. I appreciate that, uh, Brother Minister. Uh, uh, we go way back, and yes, sir, it, it, it's an honor, you know, to stand up for a man who stand up for me when I couldn't stand up for myself. So I really, really, in, matter of fact, I could say I enjoy doing it because I've been in this fight. I've been in this fight with these people, and these people are no joke. When they don't like you, they will try to kill you. They will try to kill mm. you. And they found the bomb under our stage in Switzerland. And, you know, it, it, it's crazy when they want they, they want to block your thinking. That that to me that's that's absolutely crazy when somebody's trying to block what you think and feel. <laughs> that's 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 insane. But that's how they that's how they feel, that's how they think. But we know what we know what the end result is of these people and, and, and that that's gonna happen in a few days. That's right, brother. Well, I know this. Public Enemy was on the front line from the beginning of our struggle. And you never wavered. Even though you were popular and they threatened you with, with all kind of threats in that industry, you have never wavered in your support of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. And because of your strength, you all have become legendary all over the world because yes, of your stand. And the nation did not leave you out there. Once you took your stand, we were right there with you every step of the way, even to the point when you all were getting counsel and guidance from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan on how to avoid the traps and snares that That's the right. enemy laid. So, so, brother, I know that you all have proven your gratitude, and certainly your your legendary status has been cemented in the pantheon of social strength and organizing and activism. And you're starting the revolution, along with others, of conscious rap. And you don't know how many people were impacted by you all. Uh, rapping the truth, talking about it takes a nation of millions to hold us back, fear of a black planet, on and on and on. Public Enemy, KRS, all of the brothers who took the teaching and the words and put it to a beat, the, 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 the black nation is, is in your debt. And may Allah bless you all as we're all getting older now. You know, may he bless us with longer life to do better and greater work. Not just long life to lounge and ticket, but as I'm coming into my 60s and you all are coming in or in your 60s and some of you are near that, we, we are OGs, but hell, we're young men now. That's because right. Because we, right. we, we're youthful OGs. You That's understand right. what I'm saying? That's, That's right. right. Well, <laughs> anyway, may Allah bless you, brother, with long life and health so you can do more damage to the enemy's world. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, 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 I said we, I'm, not, I'm not the age of my parents were when they were my age because uh, I remember hitting my mother with when I was a young, young, because my mother is not that much older than me. She's like 15 years older than me. Had me when she was a teenager, 15. So, yeah, I, I, the, I remember when I first met the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in Washington, D.C. I came down to represent Public Enemy, and this was 1988 at the Howard, uh, Howard, uh, Howard University Hotel on uh, Howard Inn. The Howard Inn on, on Georgia Avenue, and one of the things he had said uh, to me in that meeting with uh, brother, uh, brothers, brother Conrad and Mustafa and others 
at that time was the children of the 60s and their parents was under tremendous pressure so they produced mm. young people uh, born in the 60s were that uh, was a we was the bridge so to speak to to the young and the old so that that's our generation to, to bridge the gap between the young and the old so i feel i feel like i'm still trying to bridge that gap between the, the young and the old i'm a i'm a young og like you said <laughs> and all praise be right. to allah <laughs> praise be to allah brother brother minister before we we wrap up you mentioned nipsey hustle and I, I had a question. I'm going to merge it in with a, a question that someone texted me um, because I think it, it, they go hand in hand. Um, but I wanted to see if you, if there were any, what parallels you may see or uh, similarities. Um, because Nipsey, Nipsey's language was all money in, no money out. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us to come together, unite, pool your resources, and do something for self. Same language. One is pool your resources, pool your resources, and do something for yourself. The other is in the hip-hop language of all money in, no money out. We're going to come together. We're going to put piece up all our money, put it in. And we're going to go into business. We're going to buy this. We're going to buy this apartment complex or start to buy up the block. We saw that Nipsey mentioned in an interview how his father would take him into Compton and other areas and point out the FOI, selling the paper, selling the pies at a very young age to instill and encourage in his boys the, the mindset of doing something for self and being industrious. We saw in, when, we, when we were in LA just a couple of weeks ago, as you said, a massive amount of our young brothers and sisters and our brothers and sisters in the, in the neighborhood, from the neighborhood and the street soldiers, from the street organizations, we saw them represented in mass and we saw the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan speak at Nipsey's funeral service. You were blessed to be in that audience at the Staples Center. How is it that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in just a few days, God willing, will be 86 years of age and he's able to steal the, the, magnet, the magnetic power, the draw, the magnetism that he has to attract our young people in this generation and our brothers and sisters in the street organizations, they pay so much homage and respect and the language that they refer to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is that of a father. How, how do you see that? And, and, and how much of that produces this fear in our enemy? Well, brother, once again, your question is profound, along with the questions of your co-hosts, because you all represent, and we all represent, that messianic generation, as Brother James beautifully pointed out. Those children of the 60s, as we were and are, you know, we were coming out of, our parents were coming out of a slave mentality. And it was the young generation that wanted change. We just didn't, they just didn't know the truth. And that was the value and is the value of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that began to permeate throughout black America, particularly in the late 50s and early 60s at the prominence of the voice of Brother Malcolm as the national spokesman and representative of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And my father was a warrior. Man, he, he was fearless. He didn't know the truth, but he was fearless. And he had an inclination toward Islam. 
Yes, he did. He came to the mosque and heard the truth. He was doing what he was doing in the street, but he always respected the nation. So I grew up with a respect for Islam. My mother uh, was pregnant with me when she first heard Minister Farrakhan as Louis X when he visited the mosque in 1960. Mm. She just told me that recently. Yes, sir. So, so that seed and germ of love for truth was right there in this generation. So we came in the 60s, you know, growing up. And, and what you said about Brother Nipsey, I lived that. I remember uh, the Muslims coming through with the bean pot. We thought they were strange. Because, man, it'd be 80 degrees and they'd be in a suit and tie. And we didn't understand that as youngsters. Right. But we respected them. We bought the pie. You understand? Mom bought the paper. Muhammad speaks. Then we would see the Black Panthers come through. Right. The Us organization come through. You know, with the fist. Right. And so right. we grew up. Then we turned on the AM radio and we could listen to James Brown saying, say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. We could hear Nina Simone saying, young, gifted, and black. That's where it's at. Right. We could hear Marvin Gaye asking the question, what's going on? Right. So, so we, were, we were growing as youngsters. That's when the Crips started. Yes. And the Crips weren't gang banging in the sense of, of shooting and killing. Right. The Crips were walking around with leather coats on and hats and you know, and you might get your leather coat taken. Or, and if they had a fight, they went and played football and, and beat the hell out of each other playing football. That's how the Crips started when I was coming up. They were just getting started. So the enemy went to work to corrupt uh, the, the young gang, the strength of the young black male that was into gangs. But in those days, brother, we had baseball, in the projects, football, right. basketball, boxing, martial arts. We had everything you could want coming out of the 60s and the 70s. So that male aggression, we could take it out on the field and wrestle. Because brothers ain't like sisters now. We wrestle. We slap box. We, we put it up. We come on with it. And right. that's how we did it, growing up. And that's what happened with Nipsey. Nipsey grew up in the hood and he had to learn how to put him up and stand up for himself. And before you know it, he became a part of a brotherhood, you know? But the beauty of Nipsey and what made him dangerous, and we can't ever discount the possibility of intrigue because yeah. if Nipsey's vision caught on, then brother Nipsey would have been an example to other rappers like Brother JT, the bigger figure, and other young rappers who took their money and used it to build and do something positive for the community. So these young brothers, they don't have Jewish managers and agents and people of, you know, who direct you and tell you how to invest. So they're not that sophisticated, thank God they sometimes become more useful than those prominent brothers and sisters that have a lot of money on paper, but everything they buy, they got to get permission from their agent or their manager who controls their finances. And let me tell you something, when you reach that level of success, then, then you, you make a lot of compromises. Some we know and many we don't know. And this enemy is so wicked, brother, you flying in your own private jet and they'll blow the damn jet out of the sky. They're just wicked like that. You're not dealing with a Rudy Poop. You're dealing with a man that rules the world and intends to keep on ruling it. So in this uh, 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 frame of mind that this enemy is in, a man like Nipsey potentially was a threat because of his love for the people and the hood and he's putting his money where his mouth was. So for a young brother like that, you know, it was the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Look at the great leader that we have. He literally donated to Los Angeles and the believers there under the leadership of our 
Student Regional Minister Abdul Malik Saeed Mohammed. You know, they were out in the community working with the gang, doing a good work. Right. And right. when Brother Nipsey was murdered, Minister Farrakhan sent 150,000 free complimentary final calls That's right. into that community. And you should have seen the young soldiers, the brothers and sisters coming right. there with the fine clutching the final call like it was a souvenir and they were going to frame it and put it in their homes and when they saw the brothers they would open up the crowd and let the brothers right. come through if That's there right. was some tension in the crowd the people would be ready to fight and then one foi would be able to calm down 50 or 100 or a thousand Angry black people. Oh, yes, I mean, the work of Brother Fontaine, the general manager of the final man. call and others. Man, do you know the nation of Islam literally stopped riots? That's right. And the That's police down there. What is the LAPD's position? They should tell Facebook, look, the nation of Islam is a, is a peaceful, uh, helpful uh, organization. They should jam Facebook Man. because when it got real crazy on them streets and the people were ready to rise up, the police called on the Muslims. Yes, sir. Could you help us, please? Could you step in? So, so why is the LAPD? Why isn't the mayor? Why aren't those who know the good work of Minister Farrakhan? Now it's your time to stand up. You knew how to utilize us when you wanted peace, and we wanted peace. So we weren't tools, we were there to keep peace because we didn't want our people vamped on and moved on by the enemy. So it was our desire that our people didn't uh, go to jail or get beat down or tear gas. So that came from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. But think about the fact that it was Minister Farrakhan and his words to those who were in mourning, who were in pain, but the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in his eulogizing of Brother uh, Nipsey Hussle gave context to his life, Man. gave understanding as to why God permitted this man who was like a sparrow from Capistrano that went away for the winter but always came back to his home. Just, yeah. I'm telling you, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is just a... a uh, uh, a divine man. Yes, yes, sir. He ain't no speech maker. He delivers the word of God. And I mean, he takes you to the next level of wherever your consciousness is. You go up and up and higher and higher. So he's a jewel. I said uh, sparrows, but I meant swallows of Capistrano. Thank you for that correction, brother. The, the point being, is that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is a jewel, not just a jewel. Let me stop right there. He is the crown jewel That's right. of our people's struggle and sojourn. He's the, he's the jewel in the crown of Elijah. Mm. And you and I, as, as a people, will never get another one like him. Right. And when he goes, I feel sorry for America when you make your move that you're planning to make. And let me say this last word about the Bay Area. Yes, since sir. that's where I am. Yes, sir. On behalf of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Yes, let sir. me say this, Bay Area. Your worth in the sight of God is nothing except that you are the social media capital of the world and the communication and information capital of the world. Perhaps that's your only worth and value to the world is Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, uh, Twitter, and whatever else is in this area. But if you cut off the Messiah, if you cut off Minister Farrakhan and the value of his work in communicating with the peoples of the earth, then perhaps you've lost the value of this area. Well, then what holds back the hand of God from wiping this area out with the uh, promised earthquake. So you better rethink. I know the enemy is listening because he's already produced technical difficulties. And I'm nobody. I'm nothing except I represent the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in this area. 
So this area has a track record of being very ugly black people. And we can just list the destruction of the Black Panther Party in this area. Man. The destruction, the murder right. of the Jackson Solidad brothers, Jonathan uh, and George Jackson. Come on now. Come you on. may have forgot the murder of Stanley Tookie Williams and Come on now. Quentin. Come Let on. me tell you something. This area is right at that point of being wiped out by a great earthquake that's from. So if you want to maybe extend your time, mm. it's so damn expensive to live in San Francisco, $4,000 a month for a one-bedroom apartment. We're only here because Minister Farrakhan sent us back here to look out and see if we can save a few more lives. But I'm telling you, Northern California Bay Area, I, I think I can warn you on his behalf, be very careful of your decision making while you have a chance to aid the messenger in giving him the platform through your uh, high communication system. You might want to rethink if you know the hand of God is real then you better, you better rethink your decision and we'll try to help you rethink it. But this, this area, the Bay Area, is under a threat of total destruction. I just hope Allah and his Christ and their angels give us a heads up and we'll do our best uh, if we're worthy. But if not, then we will do all we can while we can to make sure that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's good name Yes if not besmirched and denigrated and slandered and we sat back and waited for a mystery God to defend our leader. May Allah bless you, brother, and keep you. I hope we were helpful and I hope your audience um, um, got something out of today and I hope that Allah humbled my heart to share what was on my heart uh, and uh, I thank Allah for the day I saw the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan with these eyes and recognized him as the man of God. May Allah bless you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. May Allah bless you as well, Brother Minister, and thank you so much for your beautiful spirit, the passion of your words, and the truth that you spoke tonight. And it's our prayer that everyone listening we want to thank everybody that called in I did get a few text messages from some who experienced some difficulty said they had to try three and four times to to get on but there's been a continuous uh, flow of people calling in um, to listen to what we talked about tonight so we thank you all for taking time out of your Sunday schedules we're going to go to work to produce this podcast and get it up in the archives so that you all can access it before the clock strikes 12 out here on the west coast and so it's still 7 about 7 40 p.m uh, so we're going to go to work so that those that missed it will be able to access it I want to thank the representative of the honorable minister louis farrakhan once again student minister abdul rashid ullah muhammad for being with us tonight thank my sister half pine of course for all that you do to keep this platform moving forward and thank my big brother james bomb of the legendary public enemy for all that you do to keep this platform moving forward and we thank again those that called in for spending some of your sunday evening with us god willing we'll be back next week until then family peace and love peace peace brothers